intern! Welcome, 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 welcome to a new part of the world zoo. So we have our dinosaur park, we've got our endangered species Asian jungle park, we have got our savannah park, we have got so many things. And now, and now, my dear intern, we have our future ocean marine park. And look at that. Isn't it just so beautiful? I have chosen a nice flat land, so hopefully we won't have many of the very difficult, very hard to deal with problems we've had in the past with paths. But we're here! This is the new coral reef park. And this is going to house all of our, our marine animals. It's going to house our aquatic animals. It's going to have like shorebirds and things like that. We're going to try to breed up some endangered species of turtle and whale and dolphin and shark. And it should be so much fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Ah, of course I say that and then we need to do a little bit of a stretch because it's going to be a lot of work. We are starting fresh from scratch with roughly half a million dollars in the bank. And hopefully with that much money and our time, dedication, and personal experience, we'll be able to expand this into a really wonderful marine, aquatic, coastal park. And it might only be like the first step in many steps of our park. But let me go ahead and show you around real quick our, our marine park. We might have to have multiple marine parks because whales are huge that's why intern but here's our entrance our grand entrance which will become a custom entrance in the future you can hear the happy seagulls crying out in the distance there's not much of a path yet I will show you the full extent of the path here's our little path and now we're turning and you can kind of catch a glimpse of some things and they're really pretty turquoise waters and we're turning and we're turning and look at that the path is now over <laughs> so there's not really like anywhere to walk yet because we haven't really determined what we want here but we do have five little ponds a uh, little like kind of tide pool reef little pond things they're salt water so they're not they're not fresh water and they're meant to house turtles they're meant to house the coastal birds they're meant to house the really awesome sea dragons and jellyfish so let's go ahead and look at those we've got a whole bunch of palm trees here as usual we don't have a permit for a lot of unknown invasive plant species we have to earn that right but we have some of the nice little the brushy grass and we've got some palm trees <gasps> hello palm tree little hug for the palm tree little hug for the palm tree it's so awesome look at that green leaf i love green leaves they're my favorite color and then we've got these. So there's a whole bunch of little tide pools, scabbler, or, well, they're not so little really. I call them tide pools, but they're really kind of like small, small ponds. But we've got this beautiful white sand leading into the turquoise waters of the reef areas, various rocks that are, are stuck up all over the place. We've got some nice little water that's in the water. <gasps> Isn't this going to be so awesome for when we are able to add in some animals? Just tiny little... Eh, eh, yeah, there we go. Just tiny little uh, coastal rocks, but we will be adding in much larger ones pretty soon. And then over here, oh, it's a little triad of trees. Hug, hug for the tree, hug for the tree. We've got a bear pond, so this is a nice big one. And look at that view back there. What do you think, intern? What do you think of that? It's like a little triangle of um, waterfalls, and oh my goodness, they sound so relaxing. Ooh, that's so nice. Look at that. Isn't that just so pretty? That is so pretty, if you ask me. That is just lovely. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. So glad to be here, but I can't wait to see what kind of animals we add in here. And we're going to swim, swim, swim across. We don't really... You know what? I was going to say, we don't really have to worry about leeches in this water intern. But I, I know that there are definitely some blood-sucking parasites that look like giant fleas, basically. They look really freaky, and they attach themselves to the gills of fish gills and suck out the blood from that very tender location on fishies. So, hmm, we don't have to worry about leeches, I don't think. Are there aquatic leeches in the ocean? That's a good question. I don't know. I love all the questions that our job has us think up. It's so fun. It's so fun. Well, we'll look up that answer, and hopefully, I guess you can just always check your underwear for marine leeches, and we'll see what happens. There's some calmer ponds, you know, just little, little itty-bitty ones. They've got little tiny, eh, swim, 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 swim. They've got little tiny uh, islands in the middle. <gasps> you know what we should do in turn? 
We need to put a treasure chest on these little islands. That would be adorable! And can you imagine having sunken ships as decoration pieces just sticking out of these spots? That would be so cute! Oh my goodness, we'll do that. The guests will love it. We'll make this a wonderfully themed park. Swim, swim, swim. All right, and then we've got another little spot over here. This is just kind of a very cool little deep pond. Uh, the water is very shallow though, so we could put maybe something that doesn't really need a lot of deep water in here. So maybe a land and aquatic mix, or we could even add in a deep pond into this. So we might come in and we might make this much, much deeper. So there's that one. Whew. As you can tell, the park feels kind of big, but it's really not that big, especially if we start thinking about what it's going to be like to add in tanks and aquariums for whales and things like that. And then we finally got another huge lake area that I think should house somebody pretty big. But not too big. Blurp. Blurp. Like turtles. Blurp. Eh. Eh, there we go. And another little island up there in the back corner. And I think it looks really wonderful. So there's a lot of room for growth. There's a lot of potential. It's not as big as some of our parks. <gasps> oh! It's time for a challenge from our bosses. So let's see about this. It's time for a new advertising campaign in your zoo. Families love to visit zoo and you want more to visit yours. If you have a happy animal family in the zoo, you can get more guest families to visit and make donations. If you take a picture of a dodo family, a savarium family, and a bush antler deer family, your marketing team can create cool billboards to attract uh, families to your zoo. Well, two things in turn. This is the wrong zoo for that. And if a marketing team is given pictures of a living dodo family, like living extinct animals, and they cannot create interesting billboards that are going to attract a guest, then I would fire the whole team. They would be worthless. Worthless, I say. All right, so there we go. This is the size of our starter park, and we had Coral Cove in the past. This place is going to be called Coral Reef, and we're gonna see what we can add to it. And first things first, we are going to start by making sure that our guests have something to look at, something to keep them interested in. And I was thinking, we want to keep it kind of on the low end. We want like a few nice, easy, manageable creatures, maybe from the reef biomes, maybe from the coastal biomes. So I need your help at picking some of these two in turn. So let's go through and look at our options. And I want you to let me know, uh, put a note on my desk down below and let me know what creatures you want to see in here based off of what we have available. Because keep in mind, we have hundreds of creatures to pick from, but we don't have all the creatures in the world to pick from because that would exceed what Ben can give me. So let us check what's going on here. And this is not going to be the place except in a couple, ex like we'll make a couple exceptions for prehistoric uh, aquatic animals from prehistory that are that are extinct if we're talking about like sharks well come on they've been around forever so that doesn't count as prehistoric i'm talking about ones that would be classified as currently extinct but we can get our wonderful zookeeping hands on this isn't exactly where we're going to put them unless you know the guests and you in turn really desperately want them so i'm open to it but we're trying to focus on modern day creatures especially ones that might be endangered or we need to raise awareness for and we're going to focus on those primarily, but let's see. All right, so going down the list, and let's actually come over here. So we can kind of get near the water, maybe. Well, it was a good idea in theory. <laughs> so we could see them a little better. There we go. All right, so this would be our little nurse hound. And this is a coastal creature. Very cute. I really like nurse hounds. We've never had them in the park before. So maybe we could put like some nurse hounds and turtles in here. In fact, I'm thinking this might be the first area we work with. And we might try to make it a nice multi species exhibit. So I'm really, really liking the idea of that here. And then we've got a chain cat shark which i've never heard of before so we would have to do some research on them but it sounds pretty cool then we've got the chinese white dolphin so that would be very interesting and also a species that we would probably want to give a huge tank to so for now let's try to think about you can tell me in turn if you want these species in the future but we're also trying to think about creatures that we could add just to this area for now we've also got the Austro the dusky dolphin excuse me um which I don't know. Yeah, Dusky Dolphin, not currently available. The Atlantic Humpback Dolphin, very, very pretty, so that's an option. 
We've also got the Hawaiian Spinner Dolphin. I have to admit, anything with Hawaiian in its name is going to have a little bit of my personal bias. So, and the Hawaiian seals, for example, are totally awesome. So we might look into those in the future. We have flounders, which are really cool. They could probably go in here as like a multi-species thing. Um, little, little coastal guy. We've also got some pied avocets, which is probably pronounced horrifically wrong, but they're coastal birds. And I do want to try to have a lot of uh, like the aquatic creatures, the semi-aquatic creatures, and a lot of the coastal bird creatures uh, and other coastal creatures that we can get in here, like little crabs if we can find any and things like that, so that we can have them roam around and provide additional things for the guest not only to look at, but more of a sense of a united ecosystem between land and water. So that's on, on in the plans for the future. The common bottlenose dolphin, and there are some of these ones who can be trained for shows. I'm not opposed to doing training for shows in turn. Um, because the guests really like it, and it gives especially the really, really, really intelligent animals positive behavioral training, and we would only use positive behavioral methods. As a whole, I am pretty solidly against the idea of using creatures just for entertainment. Keep in mind that our zoos are always based more around education and the animal's well-being. Animal's well-being, education, those two comes, come far and ahead first than anything else and we're not going to turn these guys into a sideshow but if we could make interactive shows where they enjoy participating and their health is always put first i wouldn't be opposed to that because it is fun to train them so keep that in mind in turn we have the short-beaked common dolphin Hector's dolphin, which is indeed a critically endangered species and we have bred up Hector's dolphins quite a bit before we have the Erotoway Irado dolphin. Oh, that's a mouthful. And I know that they're currently going through a lot of difficult times. So if we do get this guy, we'll be able to talk quite a bit about the um, the way they get caught in by nets when the fishing boats are going by. They get caught quite often as bycatch, and it's very very sad. We have the common eelder, which is adorable, shorebird. The John Dory, which also could be a very nice large fish to put in here. We've got the Mahi Mahi, which I personally think is completely amazing. Another fish species that's supposedly doing well in population, but recent estimates have put their, their population way, way low because they have to be very old before they start being gathered by the deep sea trawling for fish and their population sizes have been completely decimated by the appetite for Mahi Mahi. So they've gotten to the point where unsold Mahi Mahi are being piled up in giant piles and landfills and just rotting. And the old fish, because they have to be several, I, I, I don't want to say decades, but they have to be very, very old before they are mature enough to have babies of their own. So the old fish who keep getting caught are taking away from the only breeding population. So we could talk a lot about the Mahi Mahi. Also, it's really beautiful. It's fascinating. I love fish. Of course, we have the manatees. We definitely need to have a manatee reserve where we can try to, you know, shelter them, maybe rescue a few of them. Boating injuries of the manatees among, uh, like, especially where the Florida Keys are, are very, very common. And so we could look into manatees. There's the milkfish, which I am completely unfamiliar with, so it would be another one to study. This guy is really cool looking, but he is an extinct one, so we're gonna pass him up for now. The northern sea otter, I am totally a-okay with putting in some otters, if you think that would be a fun thing to do in turn. The finless porpoise. We've got the harbor porpoise. The Thornback Ray, and we could do quite a few different rays. Rays are often hunted, and especially as bycatch too, or as trophy hunting, uh, or as comp competitive hunting. They're hunted pretty strongly, and they don't quite have as much support as sharks do, even though their numbers are plummeting just as quickly. So we could talk quite a bit about rays and how awesome they are and their function in the ecosystem. And then we've also got the Harbor Seal. Hello, adorable thing! So yes, I would be very happy to add a few seals in here. Little seal colonies. We've got the bonnet head shark, which I'm willing to add in, but I don't know if it's happy. There's a few of these sharks that because of the way they um, are genetically coded, you could say, they just are never happy in our zoos. And that's not our fault, it's just a way that their coding is. So we have to keep that in mind. 
the bull shark, which is actually one of the more aggressive sharks uh, in the waters. The one that tends to be responsible for the most human deaths, believe it or not. They're very aggressive feeders, and they tend to travel in groups. So if you go overboard and you get eaten by a shark, it's probably a bull shark. Lemon shark, not as dangerous, but quite as, like, equally fascinating. The itty bitty leopard shark, which I'm a big fan of, I really think it's adorable. And some of these we might not want to put into these waters. We might want to put up in, like, a shark tunnel. We could rebuild a shark tunnel. So, you know, keep the ideas flowing in turn, keep them coming in. Building this zoo with you is what makes it so fun. There's the gray smooth hound shark, which is quite interesting. Ooh, yeah, so let's see smooth greyhound shark, which would be oh so cute But like I said, we'll focus on trying to put the sharks up where guests can see them in shark tunnels And this will be more the in-ground like a little tidal pool reefs will be more for where people uh, Can watch turtles swim and fish swim in little schools and we might put like little observation platforms Lift up where people can walk. What is this? Ooh, look, it's a fire coral. Let's put it down here. Yes. But we might lift up where uh, the observation area along the edge would be, so you're not even with the bottom of the ground. You would actually be lifted up a little bit to see out slightly. So I think that would be really nice. And then let's go through and see who else is here real quick. The Port Jackson shark. We've got the sandbar shark. So a lot of sharks to pick from for the coastal options. The sawtooth sawfish, which, ooh. That would be a critically endangered creature, and we could probably do a lot of cool research on them. The winghead shark, which I've never heard of before, but it looks awful like a hammerhead with a more elongated uh, eye area. So, hmm, that would be fun to look into. We've also got the European sea sturgeon, and the sturgeon is quite a powerful fish, so it would be fun to look into that guy. We have the beluga sturgeon, which looks freaking amazing! What? Then, of course, the green sea turtle, which is indeed an endangered species, so it would be great. I think we'll probably have green sea turtles running around in here, so I can see them showing up in here pretty soon. The false killer well. The southern mink well, which will need a huge enclosure. The unnamed well that I kind of recognize, but then I don't. Unnamed, and it's huge, and it would need a giant enclosure too. And not this guy unless by high demand, an extinct critter for the coastal area. So that's the coastal. And just really quickly, I'm going to show you. So that, remember, intern, this is all so that you can have lots and lots and lots of options if you want to start letting me know what you want to see here. Let's see, where on earth is Reef? There's Reef. Really quickly, we have got extinct, extinct. The great hammerhead shark. Extinct. We've got the brown moray, the green moray, so that would be the eels. Extinct. We've got the reef mantas, which I totally would be happy to add a few mantas in. This might be big enough for one or two, so I can see a couple of them in here as well. The red parrotfish, the spot, ooh, spotted eel ray. Mm -hmm. I love them, they're very beautiful. And did you know, and I've told you this before in previous uh, adventures we've had together in Coral Cove in turn, but researchers actually recently assigned a program uh, that NASA used to look at space pictures and figure out the constellation of the stars and the location of where various pictures were in relation to the universe. And they used that program on pictures of the spotted eagle rays to quickly identify the unique pattern of spots on the back of a spotted eagle ray and identify an individual from that just by running the program instead of having to manually go, does this tiny spot line up with this tiny spot on a whole bunch of pictures, which I think is awesome. There's also the leafy sea dragon, which is so cute and delicate, and I could totally see it in its own little enclosure, like a little teeny, not too teeny, but like a nice little tank that it could enjoy. We've got some sea crates, so some sea snakes, which would be very fun to add in. The blue-lipped sea crate. We've got the olive sea snake. We've got the col uh, columbrin sea snake. The nurse shark, which is a personal favorite of mine. Here's the Hawaiian mock seal, so I definitely want to add in some of those guys in the future. Black tip reef shark, so there's another option for a pretty fun addition. The whale shark, which is quite beautiful. The white tip reef shark. We've also got the flatback turtle. Where are you? Turtle, there you are. Flatback turtle. The hawksbill turtle. The olive ridley. 
the yellow clownfish, and the zebra shark, which is very pretty. I really would love to see more about the zebra shark. So they are those guys in turn, and they're kind of the ones we're going to start with when it comes to coral and when it comes er, coastal and when it comes to reef area. And there are other creatures, don't get me wrong, that we can add in in the future. Rocky coast animals, for example, which include everything from the marine iguana, which is quite interesting, to, let me see if I can find them, the southern sea otter, absolutely adorable, and quite a few of those, like the white pelican, I could see some white pelicans in here, or we might get some Atlantic puffins, oh, so many options, the Caspian seal, I would love to see a Caspian seal. I really, are they that shade of blue, for example? I need to do more research. And of course, the elephant seal, which is a, quite a large individual on its own. So there's Rocky Coast. Uh, some of the polar ice creatures we could consider, we'd have to build them probably in enclosed exhibit because it's very, very hot here. But we could consider some of the polar ice creatures. And then there's the deep sea creatures which include everything from like Fraser's dolphins to a ton of jellyfish to marlin. Now we're looking at dolls, porpoises. We're looking at sailfish. We're looking at like the leatherback sea turtle, which is the largest of all the sea turtles. And I believe one of the, the largest reptiles in the world, if not the largest, like in terms of tonnage, because this thing weighs a ton. I, I am pretty sure it's for sure the largest turtle, I'm not sure about the largest reptile that currently exists in terms of weight, sheer weight. There might be some crocodilian species or uh, some very heavy anacondas that might win out, but I'm not sure because I'm pretty sure the leatherback sea turtle is just like tons and tons and tons. And there's also a lot of like tuna and wahoos. I don't even know what a wahoo is, so we could research that. Blue sharks, pygmy right whales, lots of lots of whales. So there's a lot to choose from intern and I showed all of them to you so that you can help me pick out what you want to see here because we definitely can't add everybody per se. That might be a little bit difficult to do, but I want to make sure that we see some of the creatures that you want to learn more about and that you want to see added into our beautiful marine zoo. And like I said, if things go very successfully here and you're very excited about what we're learning, if we fill this place up, we will just open up another extension of Coral Reef Park and we'll have a second area that we can go to just like we do with all of our world zoo parks. And don't worry, in the future, we will be going back and we will be adventuring over to our old parks and seeing how they're doing. So that'll be a lot of fun in turn. But all right, I think first off, we're going to start off with some birds, some coastal birds and the green sea turtle and some fish hanging out in here. We'll get this area enclosed. We will get some little observation platforms built. We'll get some guest areas constructed and we'll work on that tomorrow morning in turn. So I will see you bright and early in the morning and just get ready. Hopefully we won't run into marine leeches, but there's going to be a lot of work to do. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.